the umpires have never had it easy. The ones who get it in the neck would say that peace with the wild men has been hard won. Here's Bill Snell's beautiful shiner. Just look at it. He receives commiseration from Jack McMurray Jr., ace league umpire. The biggest change came in the 1980s when football authorities responded to community attitudes by getting tougher on violence. The most dramatic penalty was handed to one of the game's greatest, Hawthorne's Lee Matthews, for this blow to Geelong's Neville Bruns. Oh, gee! A Geelong player's gone down behind the play. Matthews was charged in a civil court and convicted of assault. It's going on everywhere here. I can remember the first thing myself after after I had uh, after Brunsy had ran past and I and I and I sort of struck him. I thought, what do I do that for? You know. And then I thought, oh, they'll be coming. I knew they'd be coming. The Geelong players, and so I just let them come. The well, the umpires haven't had much chance. You can't. There's no way none of the umpires could have controlled that situation. Look at that. Matthews is scary. Those little black beady eyes. Big Nick was ordinary. When you got real close to Big Nick, you're in a lot of strife. Car was dangerous. Crackers Keenan is one of several who've missed grand finals because of their impulsiveness. He was outed in 78 for this shot in his feud with Don Scott. Phil Carmen probably cost Collingwood the 77 flag with this spike. While Richmond captain Neville Crow missed the only premiership he would have played because of this. But the brave men aren't the ones dishing it out. South's Bob Skilton was home resting after yet another tough season when he won his third Brownlow medal and was called to TV ringside to be toasted. i tell you one thing, Bob. Here at TV ringside, I can say this honestly, you're amongst friends. <laughs> Skilton's mate was the idol of the western suburbs Ted Whitten. Like Charlie Sutton before him and Doug Hawkins later, Whitten represented the working class origins of footy when larrikins became Footscray heroes by just being themselves. You're a bit young, son, to host a show like this on your own. <laughs> no buts, Doug. Be serious about this, son. <laughs> Come on, keep going. That was so <laughs> Now tell me, Mr. Whitten. Mr. Football, if you like. Did you ever give some back chat to the little man in white? Ted, how does it feel uh, to be walking down this lane, approaching the game for, approaching the ground for your, for your last game? Feels bloody awful, does it? Does it? I don't feel very happy about it at all. The ball was out of sight. Hey, you've got the wrong boat. I only whacked them when the ball was in sight. Now we've got our backs against the wall, we're going to fight, and we're going to fight hard. You've got to show me all the guts and all the determination you've got in your body. You've got to inspire me with this last quarter bit. You've been in front all day and you've got to stay there. Oh, you got and, and there's fister cuffs going on right, left and centre and um, I rush, rushed in and of course I play with no teeth so I'm, I'm spitting and shouting at Teddy and shaking him and, and I was just about ready to go on with Teddy and all of a sudden he turned around and he said, kiss me, killer. Try to get rid of him. Tell me, Mr. Football, was there a fight you'd ever miss? And didn't you give the gummy shark a hug and a farewell kiss? No, no, not me. I was just trying to get the mud out of his mouth. Thank you. I'm starting to feel a bit sad and sorry about it. I don't... Oh, you bet. Oh, you bet. I'm glad you like the film because the very special little presentation from all us here at World of Sport yes. goes with all of our very best wishes, congratulations, and that's a film of the action that you've just seen. Thank you very so, much. So uh, that'll be a memento of your last day. Good on you. Just look at the camera, Dougie, and say, Go, go doggies. doggies! Go! Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> most emotional day when E.J. Whitten dominated the Melbourne cricket ground for the last time. He was aptly described as one of the few men who had given more to football than it had given him. It's one of the most moving things you can see is, uh, I think, a tremendous tribute to Ted, because Ted was 
seen as a footy person, and was. You know, I think Teddy realised that the end was pretty near and uh, it was a special moment to him and a special moment for footy. It was one of those integrative things that, that brought, through a person, brought the whole footy world together. To see that man uh, push his arm into the air to wave was um, something that I think people, you know, were touched by. Even in front of the members, he, he, he gave them the defiant fist in the air uh, when his son told him that he was passing the members. Forget about anything else, you just saw a father and a son really enjoying moments of their last days together in their life. That when he grabbed his uh, son's face going around in that car, um, I've seen it and I've, I've had goosebumps every time I see it, and uh, close to tears. But he's got his arm around his dad, and their faces touched, and Teddy's punching the air like only Teddy can do. It was just absolutely some feeling, something really special. I think it's a great part of football to be involved in, and I was there, and I'm glad I went, and I'm glad I took my own son. This worker is about to take his life in his hands.